Hi, I'm John Rafrano for Boris TV, and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we've got an exciting new plugin for BCC7 called Match Move. I know a lot of you have been asking, you know, how can I just take text and map it to the screen like we see in the commercials all the time? And today, I'm going to show you how with the Match Move plugin. Okay, let's start with a new project. I'm going to go into my Explorer and take uh, my motorcycle rider that I've used in uh, some of my demos. And of course, this is 4.3 footage, so I'm going to match the output aspect and uh, just slim it up a bit to get rid of the, the black on the edges. And Match Move is a compositing mode. So it is going to composite uh, the track that you're putting the Match Move on with the track below it. So I'm going to go to the composite mode and select Custom. And then under Custom, I'm going to select Match Move. And that will open up the Match Move dialog. Now the first thing I want to do is start motion tracking because I want this uh, to move uh, the text along with the head of this rider. So we'll go to Motion Tracking, we'll click Track on the Fly, and that will show us the tracking cursor. We're going to open up Tracker Center, and I'm holding the Control key so I have more, uh, uh, better control over this. And I'm going to just center that right over that red dot on his helmet. Hopefully that's going to be right on the red dot there. Um, and that's where I'm going to track from. So now I'm going to uh, double click to make an, a, uh, a timeline selection. It's telling me that the cursor is not at the beginning, so I'll just set the cursor back to the beginning. And I want to do a dynamic RAM preview to do my tracking. Uh, so you can either go up into Tools and say Build Dynamic RAM Preview, or you can use Shift B, and the tracker will start tracking. Now it lost the track there, and if it does lose the track, you just go to the last good keyframe. Uh, seems like that one there is the last good keyframe. I'm going to move this selection for the dynamic preview over. Uh, and then you want to remember to clear the render cache and then you can do dynamic RAM preview again and it'll pick up where it left off. So here it is tracking quite nicely. I think there's going to be a good track. Let me just speed it up a bit. Okay, so now that we have that tracked, I will turn off track on the fly and you can see this placeholder is just over his face and so you can play it just to make sure uh, that the foreground placeholder is tracking properly and it looks like it is. Okay, so now what I want to do is add uh, another video track. So I'll go into insert video track and then I'll insert an empty event and on that empty event I will open up the effects and I'm going to put the BCC 3D extruded text, one of my favorite new plugins for uh, BCC 7. And we're going to get some text clinging to his helmet. First thing we'll do is open up the text window up on top. And we'll put got. I'm going to put three spaces and then speed because I want his head to be in those spaces. Wait for that to render. There it is. And now I want to come down and just change a few things about it. I want to go into my extrusion, make it convex. I want to increase the extrusion amount just a little bit, make it a little softer. I want to go into the front material and change the color to almost a white. And the diffuse is what controls color. So we're going to move that uh, up until it's almost white there, kind of a, an off-white. Uh, and then I will go down to um, transformation and... I want to do two things. I want to scale it back. So let me get to the master scale and just scale it down a little bit. And then I want to tilt it forward because I want everyone to know that it's 3D. So there's no sense having 3D if you can't kind of tell. And this video is not on an angle, so I'm just going to make the text on an angle. So we're just going to rock it forward just a little so people can see it's 3D. Maybe give it you know, a little bit of a spin there. Okay, uh, good enough. Now that I have that set in place, I'm going to collapse my track so I can uh, work with them better. I'm going to take this track and drop it below the composite track. Because remember, the composite is going to punch a hole in this top track so I can see what's on the lower track. Then I'll open up this custom composite to get the match mover again. And this time, I'm going to open up match move. It's, and I'm going to look at the match move foreground. It's set to none. I'm going to set it to source B. And so there's my got speed. 
uh, that is coming up because it's uh, source B underneath the match mover. And then we'll open up the transforms and put it where we need it. So I'm going to go to my position XY. And uh, once again, holding the control key, I'm going to position it so it's right oh, with his head sticking through. I think three spaces was perfect. Uh, you can scale it up and down here as well uh, if you didn't scale it before. But I've got that scaled perfectly. And uh, I think we're going to see what we got here. And there it is. We've taken the match mover and we have matched precisely to the helmet of this motorcyclist. And it's that easy to do match moving. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other parameters. I'm going to scroll down here and uh, one that we've seen before is the pivot. So when you're doing this uh, spin and rotate, let me just show you right here. Uh, if I was to uh, rotate this, it's rotating around a center. Uh, and if I go unlock the pivot and change the pivot position, I can get it to rotate uh, off of something other than the center. So there now it's rotating on uh, right around the G somewhere. All right, so you can you can play with the pivot if you're going to move these things around, or you can lock the pivot. You can also add motion blur. Uh, you could determine the shutter angle that you're going to use when you use motion blur, so that um, if these things are in motion across the screen, uh, they'll get some uh, camera blur. The interesting one here is composite, because composite turns a few things on and off. There's a shadow that you could add, and that gets um, turned on and off here, and there's also lights that you can use, as well as changing the opacity uh, to determine how opaque uh, that's going to be, and then applying a different mix mode, so like you can use uh, a difference, and then you can apply the mix between uh, the actual media and uh, the difference mode. So let me show you the, uh, the shadow. I'm going to turn the shadow on, and then we'll go down to border and shadow. Uh, the border will just add a border around the entire object. And so if you expand the width here, I'm just going to hold the control key, uh, you can just put a border around the whole uh, object that you've uh, inserted. Uh, and you can control things like the opacity of the border as well. Here's the opacity slider. I like the, uh, the shadow in this one, so I'm going to go down to shadow. And if you notice, I just want to show you this. If shadow is turned off and you come down to border and shadow, you'll notice all these shadow uh, items are grayed out. So if you ever come down to border and shadow, the items are grayed out, go back up to composite, turn the shadow on, and then the shadow items will be available. So now we can change the shadow distance, and that kind of makes the shadow start working. Uh, the angle will determine where the shadow is going to be projected on, uh, in what, you know, what direction. And I think we want to uh, bring it up just a little bit. And then you can uh, adjust the softness of the shadow and whatnot. And I'll just play it so you can see uh, the shadow behind here. So it does kind of a nice uh, shadow on anything that you insert with the match mover. So that's kind of neat. Uh, there's also a light, and you turn that on and off with uh, this light on. Once you turn the light on, you can see how it got a little more of a glow there. Um, I'm going to go down to the light, and it's pretty much uh, similar light controls that you have in other uh, light effects on the Boris tools. You can control the color of the light. You can come up here and uh, get a blue, and there's a little blue tint to the light. And you can also use the light wrap, which um, I showed in one of the other tutorials, light wrap. We'll, we'll wrap the light from the background image around the foreground. And so let me, let me do two things to make. Let me turn off the shadow and the light so you can see this a little better. Uh, we can go change the width, and you'll see, let me do it extreme, how it's really encroaching. The background's really encroaching on the foreground. But just a little bit um, kind of smooths out the edges. Uh, and you can control the softness here, uh, and it'll smooth out the edges to make that fit in the scene um, a little bit better. So I really like the um, uh, the light wrap as an effect. Okay, uh, so let's go back and check what I, I uh, skipped over crop and blend here. Uh, crop is just a crop, so, it, so you'll see it just as I move the left, the left comes in, um, the top would come down. Right, so if I had a, um, a larger object in here, and in fact, let me, let me put a larger object. Let me go to my project media. The nice thing about this is uh, 
it will actually take anything on this lower track. So here I'm going to put the Boris logo and I'm going to play it and you'll watch it change from Got Speed to the Boris logo. Um, and then back to Got Speed. So anything that's on that lower track uh, is going to be used. Let me go back to the, the Boris logo. I just want to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to go into uh, Event Pan Crop and just make the logo smaller. Place it over the helmet so that's kind of in the same position. Uh, and then we can go play this and you'll see the uh, logo is locked onto the helmet. And then again, we can, we can use these crop and blend. Uh, the blend as more like a fade of the edges. So you watch when I, when I blend left, you see that B starting to fade. All right, it starts to fade the edges of whatever it is that you're using from the left, right, uh, top and bottom. You know, it can fade the right and it'll do the same. If I had something like the sign uh, that I was blending from the last time, uh, that was perfectly square, then it would be easier to, to see the edges. Uh, but again, even with something, now this is just a flat object, I could turn the shadow on and it'll cast a nice shadow. Um, I could decide to use the lights or not use the lights depending on uh, the effect that you're going for. And so there it is with a little bit of shadow uh, lining up right with that, uh, that helmet. I just want to, before we end up here, I just want to go down and show you the different uh, kinds of lights. Let me turn the light back on. And that's in a composite, you turn the lights on. And then you've got um, a diffuse specular light, you've got a spotlight, and you've got a light sweep. And we're going to cover those in another tutorial. So that about wraps it up. Hopefully you've got a good idea on how to use the match mover. And if you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Rafrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.